Good evening, we are on Saturday the 4th of December 2021. I'm going to be continuing to share the book Infiltration, written by Taylor R. Marshall. The plot to destroy the church from within and the forward which is already up there. Chapter 1 is already up there. The forward was by Bishop Athanasius Snyder. We are now going to continue with Alta Vendita, Satan's Revolution in Tiara and Cope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Holy Michael Archangel, defend me in this day of battle, be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thy prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell, Satan, and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. We ask Our Lady to pray with us and for us and guide us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, the Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. What I will say is what I've said on the other pages. And uh, I'm going to have to look to find what the author said. Uh, he did say a few words that I think I should say each time. Um, um, what I will do tomorrow is type it up because I actually liked what he said and I will repeat it now. If you do not believe that Satan exists, put down this book, or I would say turn off this video and go and look at another channel. Moreover, if you believe that the Catholic Church can be purified merely by updated rules, policies and canonical procedures, you will find little promise in the historical diagnosis and proposed cure found in this book. St. Paul stated, for we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6, 12. The crisis of the Catholic Church relates to the intrusion of these rulers of this present darkness and she can only be purified by sanctified warfare against the demonic. I'm going to read that before every chapter. It just came to my mind that I should. So if you don't believe in Satan, don't waste your time listening to me. Not because of me, I mean, because it, it, you won't receive any benefit from it. I don't worry who listens, watches or not. It's if you wish to learn something that you haven't got the book or you don't know anything about it, fine. I, I, I'm happy for anybody to listen, but what I'm saying is you won't gain anything by wasting your time if you do not believe in God and the existence of Satan. You may as well find some entertainment. This is not entertainment. We're in serious times. If you wonder what's going on in the world now, Satan's reign is, is active, active in politicians, and that's all I'm going to say about that. So I will continue. The Pope, whoever he may be, will never come to the secret societies. It is for the secret societies to come first to the church with the aim of winning them both. The work which we have undertaken is not the work of a day, nor of a month, nor of a year. 
It may last many years, a century perhaps, but in our ranks the soldier dies and the fight continues. Those are Freemasonic permanent instruction of the Alta Vendicta, Satan's revolution in Tiara and Cope. The Frenchman Jacques Cretino Joly had a fiery faith and entered the seminary only to discern that he did not have a vocation to the priesthood. He had been a philosophy professor and attempted poetry but found his talent in research and writing. In 1846, Cretino Joly published an exhaustive six-volume history of the Jesuits titled The Religious, Political and Literary History of the Society of Jesus. Histoire religieuse politique et literature de la campagne de Jesus. In 1859, with approval and encouragement from Pope Pius V. So that would be 50. He published his most important book, The Roman Church in the Face of Revolution. Le Anglais Romain en face de la Révolution. The Roman Church in the Face of Revolution was an explosive work that claimed that anti Catholic secret societies would no excuse me no longer attack the church from without but would infiltrate her from within. The place, the plot, was detailed in a secret document and acquired from the highest lodge in Italy, the Alta Vendita of the Carbonari. The Italian Carbonari, or charcoal makers, were a secret society aligned with secret societies in France, Spain, Portugal and Russia. These Freemasonic pre pre lodges shared common goals such as a hatred for Catholicism and monarchy. The Italian Carbonari held a unique posture of hatred because for them the chief Italian monarch also happened to be the Catholic Pope Pius IX had written the encyclical Qui Pluribus in 1846 directly against the growing influence of the Carbonaro. Sometime before 1859, the Catholic Church acquired a secret document titled The Permanent Instruction of the Alta Vendita, detailing how they will eventually take over the papacy. The Italian Carbonari met in secret lodges which they called a venditas or shops. The chief lodge or vendita was the high shop or alta vendita. This document was thus a guiding document for the high shop of the Carbonari. Cretino Juli exposed the thesis of the alta vendita and the Irish priest, Monsignor George Francis Dillon, subsequently took it up. The Protestant Reformation of 1517 had obliterated European Christendom as Protestantism pro I'm not very good at pronouncing my religious Protestantism splintered and weakened there was a naturalistic desire for a new world order 
New World Order, united around liberty, egality, fraternity. Beginning in 1717, the establishing of this New World Order would be accomplished by forming a new organised religion. Through secret societies throughout Europe, from 1717 forward, the chief enemy of the Catholic Church was Freemasonry. The oldest Freemason fraternities seem to derive from the medieval guilds of stone masons. During the Reformation, however, these Masonic lodges took the form of subversive secret societies with occult rites and Gnostic philosophy. Occult Freemasonry likely derives from the Rosicrucian or Rose Cross rites popularised in Protestant regions of Germany. The founding document of Rosicrucian mysticism is Fema Fraternitatis Rosae Crucis, 1614, written by the Gnostic alchemist Michael Mayer, 1568 to 1622. This document pretends to be written by a certain man named Father Brother CRC or Christian Rosa Krups who was born in 1378 and allegedly lived 106 years. Not impossible, I have a neighbour who's alive at 102 so I think these things are still possible and then this pretended founder is typically referred to as Christian Rosencruz, who travelled to the East and acquired secret wisdom from the Zoroastrianism, their in Persia mainly, Sufism, Kabbalah and Gnostic teachers. Most traditions identify Christian Rosencruz as an Albion Gentian heretic the core of Rosicrucianism is a mystical, is mystical parables and morality rites or liturgies that teach occult lessons for the enlightened. The central mystery is alchemy, or the belief that one can create gold from lower substances. This is the heresy of naturalism, manipulating nature to produce something above nature, just as Satan attempted to transcend his nature in order to become God. After the Reformation of 1517 left a vacuum in Europe, Freemasonry organised a new universal Catholic Church instituted to unite man in naturalism, rationalism and the universal brotherhood. The strategy of Rosicrucianism and Freemasonry is to arrange secret societies to subvert the current Catholic order and replace it with an enlightened order in which all religions are approximations of the truth. All religions become allegorical and equal. The Catholic Church is the Vetus Ordo Saculorum the old order of the world. Freemasonry is the Novus Ordo Seculorum, the new order of the world. Freemasonry 
is the organized attempt to achieve what Lucifer attempted and what Adam and Eve tried. It is the temptation to alchemy, to transform lead into gold. Lucifer, Adam and Eve This is a new book, I had it for my birthday. Attempted to transform their good natures into divine natures. Similarly, the Freemasons deny the unique incarnation of Jesus Christ and reject the idea of sin and the need for Christ to die and rise again for human salvation. Consequently, there is no grace, no sacraments, and no church. Human nature alone is sufficient for humanity's happiness. It is the theological error that nature is neither healed nor perfected by grace. Rather, nature is divine. Creation is divine. And we must seek occult illumination to see the new world order of nature as divine. Not surprisingly, Freemasonry always thrived where Protestantism took root first, Scotland, Presbyterianism, England, Anglicanism and Germany, Lutheranism are the traditional centres of European Freemasonry. Similarly, Protestant America also became infected by Freemasonry, especially in the Protestant Southern United States. Following Rosicrucianism, Freemasonry worships the great architect of the universe, who is both God and the natural universe. Former members of Freemasonry have revealed that the great architect of the universe is in fact Satan. I'll add something there that they probably don't all know it until they reach the 33rd degree. So you can't blame every Freemason for worshipping Satan because they're probably not made worshipful master or higher up and they don't know, they have to go through these rituals before they get to the top level but when they get to the top level they know they know who they're worshipping back to the reading formerly organized freemasonry originated in 1717 200 years after the 1570 reformation it grew out of the anti-catholic catholicism Deism and rationalism of its time. In other words, reason, not faith, was prized by this epoch, and the free Masonic free lodges proliferated. Organized religion was rejected in favor of the sentiment that all religions are equally grasping for the unknown great architect of the universe. This is why the Freemason Benjamin Franklin ties to all the religions and denominations in his day. This is also why Freemasons enshrine the scriptures of all religions on their, on their altars. The Holy Bible, the Quran, the Vedas, the Zendavesta, the Sohar, the Kabbalah, the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads. They are, for the Freemasons, all equally true and all equally false.
They are for the Freemasons merely the kindergarten sketches of children picturing God. Since organised religions are accepted equally, the mode of divine knowledge is reason, not faith or baptism or preaching, Eucharist, liturgy or priesthood, and certainly not the papacy. Humanity does not need faith. It needs more reason, that's what they say. This is the fallout from Martin Luther's assertion of religious authority from scripture alone. We need the sacraments, we all know that. All practicing Catholics know that. This principle made every man the private and final judge of theological doctrine. Private subjective reason sneaked in by this back door, left open unwittingly by Luther. The Catholic Church excommunicated any Catholic who joined Freemasonry because it is a religion of all religions. Although it is a secret society, it makes no secret about seeking a new world order in which all religions are honoured and treated as equally true. In its pursuit of equality, it also desires the equal distribution of human property. Now that we have established the historical and physical philosophical background of Freemasonry, we can return to the altar of Vendita and the new strategy of the 19th century. Carbonari, written pseudo pseudo pseudonymously by Pic Piccolo Tigre or Little Tiger, the permanent instruction of the Alta Vendita boldly details precisely how the papacy will be won over to Freemasonic philosophy and beliefs and its central tenet cannot be repeated too often. The Pope, whoever he may be, will never come to the secret societies. It is for the secret societies to come first to the church with the aim of winning them both. The work which we have undertaken is not the work of a day, nor of a month, nor of a year. It may last many years, a century perhaps, but in our ranks the soldier dies and the fight continues. Here the Alta Vendita grants that their project may take a century. The little tiger then goes on to explain how the papacy will be acquired. Now then, in order to secure to us a Pope according to our own heart, it is necessary to fashion for that Pope a generation worthy of the kingdom of which we dream. Leave on one side old age and middle life, go to the youth, and if possible, even to the children. The little tiger explains how the youth will be seduced over time through the corruption of families, books, poems, colleges, gymnasiums, universities and seminaries. Next, the Catholic clergy will be seduced and corrupted. The reputation of a good Catholic and good patriot will open the way for our doctrines to pass into the hearts of the young clergy and go even deep to the depths of convents in a few years. The young clergy will have by the force of events invaded all offices. They will govern, administer and judge. They will form the Council of the Sovereign. They will be called upon to choose the Pontiff who will reign. 
I'll just read where it's got this high highlighted section. This quote and all the quotes from the Alta Vendita can be found in the permanent instruction of the Alta Vendito by Piccolo Tigre, reproduced in English tradition, translation in the lecture by the Right Reverend Monsignor George Dillon D.D. at Edinburgh in October 1884, about six months after the appearance of Pope Leo XXIII's famous encyclical letter, Human Hygienus, on Freemasonry. A few changes were made by top Dr. Taylor Marshall, the author of this book, to update the language and spelling to modern standards. The full text is found in the back of this book, so when we reach the back, if necessary, I will read that. Okay, so the corrupted young clergy, they will be choosing who will reign as Pope and they've obviously possibly maybe done it already. Once the corrupted young clergy become cardinals and elect a Pope, according to our heart, that's the Freemasons, many obstacles will remain in the way. And that pontiff, like the greater part of his contemporaries, will be necessarily imbued with the Italian and humanitarian principles which we are about to put in circulation. It is a little grain of mustard which we place in the earth, but the sun of justice will develop it even to be a great power, and you will see one day what a rich harvest the little seed will produce. In the way which we trace for our brethren, there are found great obstacles to conquer, difficulties of more than one kind to surmount. They will be overcome by experience and by wisdom. The little tiger next rejoices over the outcome of a Freemasonic naturalistic Pope reigning on the chair of St. Peter. The goal is so beautiful that we must put all sails to the wind in order to attain it. If you want to revolutionise Italy, look for the Pope whose portrait we must have drawn. Do you want to establish the reign of the Chosen Ones on the throne of the Whore of Babylon? Let the clergy march under your banner while they naively believe they are marching under the banner of the apostolic keys. Do you want to wipe out the last veggie vestige of the tyrants and oppressors? Cast out your nets like Simon Bar Jonah. Cast them deep into the sacrist, the seminaries and monasteries, rather than at the bottom of the sea. And if you do not rush things, we promise you a catch more miraculous than this. The fisherman of fish became a fisherman of men. You too will fish some friends and lead them to the feet of the apostolic sea. You will have preached revolution in tiara and coat proceeded under the cross and the banner, a revolution that will need only a little help to set the quarters of the world on fire. The plan of the little tiger does not include pamphlets, guns, bloodshed, or even political elections. It requires a step by step infiltration. First of the youth, next of the clergy, and then, as time passes, of those youth and clergy who become cardinals, and then the Pope. Pope Gregory, V, X is 10, V is 5, and the 16th that would be then, 
originally acquired the Alta Vendita document, which places its composition likely within the years of his pontificate from 1831 to 1846. In 1832, he issued the encyclical My Vara Vos on Liberalism and Religious Indifferentism. The document is written against the insolent and factitious men who endeavoured to raise the standard of treason. Pope Gregory the 16th writes against what appears to be a French revolution being fostered from within the Catholic Church. In Mirari Vos, he addresses and condemns seven errors invading the hearts of Catholics. 1. The abominable conspiracy against clerical celibacy number 11 2 anything contrary to the sanctity and indissolubility of honourable marriage of Christians number 12 3 indifferentism this perverse opinion is spread on all sides by the fraud of the wicked who claim that it is possible to obtain the eternal salvation of the soul by the profession of any kind of religion as long as morality is maintained. Number 13. Point 4. The erroneous proposition which claims that liberty of conscience must be maintained for everyone Number 14. 5. The freedom to publish any writings whatsoever and disseminate them to the people. For we read that the apostles themselves burned a large number of books. Numbers 15 to 16. Point 6. Attacks on the trust and submission due to princes. The torches of treason are being lit everywhere. Number 17.7 The plans of those who desire vehemently to separate the church from the state and to break the mutual concord between temporal authority and the priesthood. Number 20 Catholics living in our time may be shocked to observe popes in our day advocating polar opposites of these condemnations laid down in 1832. Current papal and consular documents and canon law make room for clerical marriage, divorce and remarriage, liberty of conscience over the objective moral law, freedom of the press, political rebellion, and the complete separation of the church from the state. Between the pontificate of Gregory the Sixteenth and our time, the plot of the permanent instruction of the Alta Vedita has taken deep root indeed. Gregory's successor, Pope Pius IX encouraged Jacques Cretinol Jolie to publish the text of the Alta Vendita in full in 1859. The plot of placing our doctrines in the hearts of the young clergy and the monasteries was no doubt on the mind of Pope Pius the IX when he issued his Syllabus of Errors in 1864, which explicitly attacked the 80 errors of Freemasonry and the Carbonari 
divided into ten sections. One, against pantheism, naturalism, and absolute rationalism, propositions one to seven. Two, against moderate rationalism, the propositions eight to fourteen. Three, against indifferentism and latitudinarism, the proper, proper, proper propositions 15 to 18. Point four, against socialism, communism, secret societies, Bible societies, and liberal clerical societies, and in brackets, a general condemnation and it's unnumbered. Point five, defense of the temporal power in the papal states, which were overthrown six years later, and in brackets the propositions 19 to 38. Point six, relationship of civil society to the church, and in brackets propositions 39 to 55. So all of that is being, they're keeping records, total records, you can just trace it all back. Point seven, on natural and Christian ethics, and in brackets, the propositions 56 to 64. So they must be. Point eight, defense of Christian marriage and in brackets, Proposition 65 to 74. Point nine, civil power of the sovereign pontiff in the papal states, and in brackets, the Proposition 75 to 76. Point ten, against liberalism in every political form, and in brackets, Proposition 77 to 80. The final paragraph is now, the Freemasons were fighting for the pantheistic deification of human beings, just as Satan had fought for the pantheistic deification of angelic beings, of which he was, because they are a higher state than us humans. They have more powers than we do, they're totally spirit. Mind you, they can live as demons in people's bodies. And, once again, that preternatural war would come to earth. In just a few short years, the Freemasons would accomplish the overthrow of the political independence of the papacy. And Pope Leo XIII would mystically see demons gathering upon Rome. What a nightmare dream. And sadly, it's looking considerably uh, as, if, as if it's come totally true. So we'll end there. That's the end of chapter two. And the third chapter is titled Our Lady of La Salette. So that's the next one on page 19 and that will continue to I don't know how long it will be our lady of that select will go on for it will go to page 26 so that will be a shorter a shorter video because it's only from 19 to 26 so that's the next chapter. So, thank you so much for listening. May God bless you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance. May you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. And I will continue to read this book. And I hope you're as interested in it as I am. It, it will cover lots of things, not just this at the beginning. It's, there's so much to learn, isn't there? So, Thank you, I'll be back with you very soon. God bless and thank you for listening, thank you for sharing. 
and thank you for your comments. Have a blessed weekend. Second Sunday in Advent tomorrow. You have to be um, in a mourning state, really, in repentance, don't we? So we can celebrate. God bless.